Welcome to the Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva, and today we're on the campus of Villanova University. And we're going to get some insight into career services. My guest today is Kevin Grubb. He's the Executive Director for Career Center. And uh, we're going to give you a little, before we get into uh, our interview, we're going to give you a little clip on the university. want them to be great. And I know this sounds cliche, but I want them to go and change the world. At Villanova, it didn't matter that I was a little bit socially awkward, not that that's changed at all, but they were willing to accept me and help me grow, which was something I'm forever thankful for. We do have such a diverse set of backgrounds and interests, but we still can come together and become part of this larger community. Augustinian values reminds us what greatness really is. Reflecting on the meaning of life, reflecting on my relationships, how open am I to other people. Inclusiveness is one of the hallmarks of the Augustinian tradition, that people are included. I see it in the way we reach out to each other. You see that with students. You see it with faculty members. They feel like they have a place. They feel like they have a home. It's really hard to capture that warmth and community feel that I feel every single day on campus. Wherever you fit in, we meet you where you are and then give you the tools so that you can flourish in whatever walk of life you find yourself in. I want my classroom to be impactful. I want them to dig and search for knowledge. You look around and it's so apparent. The connection between professors and students is really strong. What makes Villanova so special is the people here. Everyone is there to encourage each other and to help them be the best that they can be. We are a place that is willing to ask the hard questions, thinking and rethinking. How are you going to grow? How are you going to change? Truth, unity, and love. Just becomes part of who you are. Each person brings something great to the table, but together we create a better community. Be authentic. Do not be afraid to be yourself. You're with friends. You know, you're with people who care about you. Villanova offers that kind of an environment. I don't think I could ever replicate this journey anywhere else. We are enriched by people who come to us and together becomes the mosaic of what Villanova is. One of the coolest things about being an Augustinian school is that you're part of a greater community. Villanova has really shaped not only my head, but also my heart. It's a tradition of academic excellence. Teachers know your name, know who you are, know where you're from. There's a sense of beauty and peace and community here. Mm -hmm. Everybody is just here to build each other up. I think up. that's what it really means. It really is my home away from home. Everybody works together. Tries and still as a family, not only in life, but also within yourself. Embraced and welcome. I love this place. So welcome to the show, Kevin. Thank you so much for having me. Glad yeah, to no be here. Problem. Yeah. So uh, usually I start my guests um, where they went to college. So where'd you go to school? Okay. Uh, for undergraduate, I went to St. Joseph's University, also in the Philadelphia area. Uh, had a great experience there. Um, a great time, four years, uh, good road with St. Joe's, and a great uh, other Catholic institution. So my appreciation for Catholic institutions was instilled in me going there, which is why I like so much working at Villanova. Uh, and after St. Joe's, I went to graduate school at NYU mm. and was there for two years. Um, and that's where I started my career in career services is actually at NYU. Oh, As a graduate fantastic. student there, started working in the office there, uh, got hired full time, worked there for a couple of years and came to Villanova. So <laughs> Great. Well, let's go back into uh, high school. When did you start thinking about college? Was it freshman year or was it senior year? When did it all begin for you? Yeah, it was early. It was in freshman and sophomore year I started to think about. Um, what I was going to do after high school. Uh, my parents were definitely a part of driving that conversation as well as my high school was helping us all think about it, which yeah. was great. Uh, and I really started to make college visits about sophomore and junior year of okay. high school, starting to get to know the campuses and understanding who the, the people were at the campuses, understanding what the flavor of each campus was like to really understand if it would be a place for me. Good. So, so um, how did you end up uh, picking St. John's University? Um, so it was a... a 
a pretty rainy day actually in December, uh, and I had looked at colleges around the country, and uh, I'm from Pennsylvania originally, and my my parents said to me, you know, you've been getting some some letters and mail from St. Joe's and you might want to check it out. And I said, okay, you know, we can go take a look. And they sort of said, we'll swing a visit to one of your friends who was going to another school in, in Philly at the time. Um, and so I did, I took, the, took them up on that offer and I said, let's go visit. And it was not, again, not a beautiful day. Um, but St. Joe's was a very nice campus and the tour guides that took me around were incredibly kind. Um, the admissions officer was also really great and welcoming that day. And so, um, it was really that visit that, that made the difference to me, uh, mm -hmm. applied on the spot in the office. They were rolling admission at the time. Um, and so luckily enough, uh, I had, I had made some good impressions on some of the people that were there that day and they, uh, worked some things out for me to get through the application as fast as I could. And then I was accepted. Wow. So it was a fast process, but I'm very grateful because it was a great institution for me. Now, were there any other schools that were involved or it was just St. Joe's and that was it? I was looking at Boston College, um, uh, University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Um, and those were really the other two main contenders at the time. Wow. So Fantastic. Yeah. So now, once you're at the school, what did, what did the uh, school give you that uh, you started thinking, hey, um, you know, career is something that uh, I want to get into at the university level. Yeah, I, I don't think it's something that every student walks into college thinking, I'm going to work <laughs> at a college and I'm going to work in career services. So I certainly did not come out of the gate thinking that's what I wanted to do. Uh, I was very involved as a student when I was at the university uh, in student life activities. Um, and it was about junior year that a good mentor of mine, uh, I was sitting down with her and I was deciding what I wanted to do. I was a psychology major at the time, and it was sort of a classic thing. A lot of people said, are you going to be working in mental health counseling? And I said, no, but I'm not sure what else I want to do. Uh, and a really good mentor of mine at the time, which is something you know we talk a lot about with students, is finding mentors, people who can provide really good advice to you about the field that they're in. She was working at St. Joe's, and she said, did you know you could work at a university like me? Uh, and it's sort of... I don't know why it didn't dawn on me until then, but wow, you, you do what I love to do. Yeah. Uh, I really like this thing about helping other people and helping them with their college experience um, for a living. And so it finally all clicked right then. And uh, she helped me understand that it would be a good idea to go to graduate school because a lot of the positions I'd be looking for would require graduate degrees um, mm -hmm. and looked at some good programs with me. She had gone through um, a search for graduate programs herself before she started working and knew other people who did. So she got me connected with a lot of people who could help me learn about the pathway in the profession, yeah. uh, as well as the graduate programs that would probably be best suited for someone like me at the time. Um, so it was you know, right around that junior year that someone said, you might want to check this out. You've already been involved in this. So I essentially already mm -hmm. had internships you know, really in the field. Yeah. Um, and you know, she said, you, you really have a knack for this. Um, it's something that probably would be good for you. So why don't you sniff it out a little more? Very happy I did. Well, fantastic. So. Yeah. Tell me, um, after you get to NYU and do your graduate, uh, how did you go from there to Villanova University and actually coming on the campus and becoming an executive director? Yeah. Um, so at NYU, I was working there as a graduate assistant in the Career Center um, at NYU. A great place uh, for me, a great place to start my career. I knew I wanted to come back to the Philadelphia area, the Pennsylvania area. My family and friends are, are close by here. Mm -hmm. um, so that was always something I had in my sights. And um, I went to actually a conference that was specifically for people who work in career services in the Philadelphia region. So something else we talk about with students a lot is go where the people are who are yeah. in your field. Go meet those people because you never know what opportunities might present themselves when you're in those, those rooms. Uh, and it's all the time. It's the human connections that really make that big difference. So I follow my own advice. Uh, and I went to that conference, and it was there that I actually met someone who worked at Villanova at the time, and they just so happened to have an opening for a position. Wow. So it was an assistant director opportunity, uh, which was a step up for me and at an institution that I thought was extremely excellent. Um, and as a Catholic institution, I sort of had mentioned I really liked that feel about St. Joe's, and um, so it was a great appeal to me to come back and work at a place like that. Yeah. Um, and so made the connection there, had a good conversation with her. I applied to the position. She referred me to the person who was hiring. So again, it's that <laughs> referral network we talk a lot about with students. It, it really worked. Um, and so uh, my application got to the top of the stack and then I did nail the interview, thank goodness. So mm -hmm. uh, prepped and practiced for that. So I started as an assistant director at the Career Center and I was there in that position for about four years. Um, and there was an opportunity that opened up uh, a colleague in the office uh, had retired and 
I had long been interested in the stuff that she had worked on, and I had just over the years taken a natural interest in it and supported her in that work. Mm-hmm. Um, luckily, she was you know right here in the office with me for uh, me to sort of shadow her. So after she left, I inherited that position, which was the associate director, largely focusing on the data that we collect, specifically on the career outcomes of Villanova students right. um, and the technology that we use. Um, to help students find opportunities, connect with people, um, technology, social media, these are becoming huge ways that you execute a job search and connect to people. So yes. I was really spearheading that effort for two years. Um, and then the executive director at the time, who was another great mentor of mine, uh, also retired and I applied for that opportunity. Uh, she endorsed me and thought I'd be a wow. good fit, thankfully, uh, as well, and was really a champion for me in learning about the job and the process. And here I am. So, so so this is the first job for you, really, and and you've just been growing in the job. Uh, pretty much. I mean, I had worked at, at NYU. That was a full-time job for a, a, about two years um, there, and then I came to Villanova, and it's been a Villanova growth story uh, yeah. from that point on, which has been really great. I, it, I, there's no place I'd want to grow more than at Villanova, so I'm very excited, very grateful to be in this opportunity Fantastic. Today. So yeah. tell me, uh, career services, what is involved with career services? What what do you actually uh, get as a student with career services? Yeah, so a lot of things. Um, how I like to simply describe it for people is what we are in the business of doing is helping students dream about the opportunities and pathways they might want to pursue, design a way into that future, and then do it, actually execute that plan. So no matter if it's thinking about a graduate program that might be right for you and structuring a personal statement or application to that, if it's thinking about what sorts of jobs or postgraduate volunteer opportunities or internships you might be looking for, we're here to help you sort through what those are like and start to think about how you'll build your job search in that direction, mm-hmm. um, which includes looking for the opportunities, connecting with the right people who can help you learn about that industry. So they may actually have an opportunity for you later, or they might just be able to give you that insider information. So when you're applying, you make the best application for that job. Mm-hmm. So we're all about finding those opportunities and connection points uh, and being a source of hopefully gathering that wisdom for the student to say, here's all the things I'm potentially interested in and good at. How can I now start to make a pathway into the future around hmm. this? So now, uh, how does a student, uh, when, when does a student actually start to talk to career services? Is it freshman year, senior year? Yeah. How does it start here? Um, it starts mostly in the freshman year. Um, across all of the undergraduate schools and colleges, we have touch points with the, the first year students in their first year. So a lot of it is around sort of some of the basics and essentials, things like let's get a really good foundational resume for you. That is still the foundational document in executing job applications no matter what. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's look at that resume and let's start to upgrade that from what you might have written for your college applications to now making it employer ready. Um, because whether you're thinking about a graduate program or again a year of service after graduation or a job, you're going to need a resume and you sure. might want practical experience in that field before you look for that job or that graduate program. That's going to help you become a stronger applicant. Um, so we work on resumes in the first year with a lot of students. Mm-hmm. And then some of it is also just introductory. You know, here are the things that, that we offer. Here are the things that we do in the Career Center. So in addition to giving you those documents, that foundational knowledge, here's all the other things that we will probably want to help you with yeah. over the next few years. So you can come in for those services. We can offer you that. We can help you with that as you're moving through your four years of Villanova. So, so does every year have a specific thing that the students are going through, a sophomore year, junior year? Typically, it, it, it depends on the student's field of study and the type of destination they're going to when they're finished. So everyone's path is a little different. Um, and the other idiosyncrasy there is that the outcome is also different. So the employers may be recruiting at different time frames mm. for different people. Um, there are some industries that recruit very heavily in the fall semester, and they may recruit very heavily in the fall semester for internships. And then they like to convert those people, those interns, from intern to full-time. So that may be the way in the door is to get that internship. So maybe fall of junior year might be the time you need to be looking for that. Mm-hmm. For other industries or smaller companies even, they may be hiring on completely different timelines. They may be operating, you know, we'll hire when we need someone. So that spring of senior year is the time we have the full-time job, right, right. for that opportunity. So. That's where we come in to help give you that insight into what that industry looks like sure. and what that type of hiring or acceptance is going to look like to give you the right time frame for what you should be doing and when. So um, you, you, said thing, you said something about social media. Yeah. Um, what are students actually doing uh, with social media to, to, I guess, network 
um, their resumes. Yeah. Um, it is a huge vehicle to connect with people. Um, it cannot be stated enough, uh, I think, and how much that's transformed the job search um, and, and your career, really. The, the major player in this space is LinkedIn, um, which bills itself as the world's largest professional social network. I think that's true. Uh, they have hundreds of millions of people on the network that are worldwide um, in all kinds of opportunities and industries. So one of the main things that we're talking about with students and that we see a lot of success in them doing, besides building very strong profiles, is accessing what's called the LinkedIn Alumni Tool. Um, that's at linkedin.com forward slash alumni, if anyone wants to check it out. Um, and what it does is it actually shows you all of the alumni from your institution and where they are by where they live, the companies they work for, and what types of things they do, and even what they studied or what they majored in. Oh. So it can help a student really see, well, let me click on my major and see what kinds of outcomes people have had from that major. Um, Villanova has an incredibly passionate and excited alumni base that loves to talk and help uh, students uh, about their careers. So um, we oftentimes are suggesting to students, hey, let's check out this alumni tool. Let's see who's on LinkedIn. Yeah. There are over 100,000 of them that are on LinkedIn wow. from Villanova. And so they'll actually do a search on this alumni tool, reach out to one of those people. And I've heard of countless stories where people have gotten internships or informational interviews or sometimes jobs right from some of those connections where they start on LinkedIn. Wow. So that's a big way that people really executed is, is through LinkedIn and specifically that alumni tool is a big a big help. Are there any research. other social media avenues that they take? <clears throat> yes. Um, Facebook, uh, although I think people think of that as very much a personal social network, there are a lot of groups that Facebook has um, mm -hmm. that specifically connect a lot of people. I'm thinking of a story of a student I know who was uh, in her sorority here, and her sorority had a Facebook group of the alumni of the program and the current students in the sorority, yeah. and the alumni were sharing job opportunities in the group back to the students, and so one actually got connected through that, that posting inside a Facebook group, and it's through that network of people, right? You're connecting yeah. around that network of common interest or shared affiliation somehow um, that connects you. Um, Twitter is another really big vehicle that employers use a lot to post opportunities and information to people. Yeah. Um, so even for folks who are not very active on Twitter, I, I recommend things like just creating a list of people you follow to start learning about the field. Mm -hmm. Because since it's so real time and quick, there are a lot of things you can pick up just about what people are talking about, what's that information that's trending and happening now and happening fast that may arm you in a conversation for you know networking or an interview sure. that's gonna make you that much more connected to the field or the company. So lots of different ways, uh, and those are just a few. I'm thinking of Instagram and Snapchat. There's lots of ways you can still connect and learn uh, via social media. It just gives you that, that pathway. So now, what are some of the majors that Villanova has that you see a lot of students going into and, and graduating and going into those fields? Um, well, across all of our majors, everyone is very successful. Um, we do a study of a uh, survey, really, I should say, of the graduating class every year. So. We're currently finishing it for the class of 2016, but I can say for 2015, we had a 96.8 successful placement rate across all of Villanova's undergraduate majors. So um, all of them are very successful, um, but we do have a great program um, in nursing. Our College of Nursing is incredibly successful and our nurses go on to great uh, opportunities across the country at some of the finest hospitals um, mm -hmm. in the country. Um, our finance program is one of the larger programs at Villanova that our students do very well in um, and connect to a lot of great opportunities at some of the large investment banks, some of the Fortune 500 companies. Um, our communication major is a, a pretty large program as well. Uh, they do exceptionally well uh, in connecting to opportunities in all kinds of things, TV, film and communication, uh, PR, uh, and public relations and advertising, those types of opportunities they go into. So um, a lot of really successful programs and all of them have really great outcomes that really are indicative of, I think, what the student's interest is beyond the major. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something we often talk a lot about with them is thinking about beyond this major, what's really interesting to you. The thing about it is employers are not only looking at major, actually. They're really looking at what are the skills that you have. Um, mm. So our, whether you're an engineer who, I didn't mention them, but they go on to great success as well at many of the top engineering firms uh, and even some other businesses where the engineering mindset is uh, quite needed. Um, but really what employers are looking for are the skills and, and not necessarily just a major. So how do you find the uh, corporations to, to come to the school? And, and uh, how do you get those kids to, to apply for those jobs? Yeah, so a lot of the companies find us, uh, really? which is really nice. 
Um, so a lot of that is really through our alumni base, who are very passionate about recruiting at Villanova and bringing more Villanovans into their institution. So we're forever grateful and thankful for them who uh, really push recruiting at Villanova as, as a big thing. Um, so that's the way we get a lot of connections. In addition, what we'll do is regularly poll our students and find out what sorts of companies or opportunities are you most interested in. And then what we do is go out to find who are some of those companies that are doing that or who did they name specifically and we can start to bring into the mix so our students have the opportunity to connect with them. Um, and then as far as letting the students know, we have a specific system where the opportunities are posted. Um, it's called Handshake. And what the employers can do is post opportunities specifically for Villanova students to see in that system and then apply to those opportunities. Gotcha. Um, and then we'll market it through our partners and colleagues and the, who are the faculty in the departments or who are our professional development staff in the schools and colleges that help us spread the word. Um, last year, there were over 10,000 opportunities posted in the Handshake system for students, jobs yeah. and internships. So, so great tell opportunities me, there. Tell me something then. Um, at the high school level, uh, if I'm a student at the high school level and uh, I'm looking into a particular career, yeah. um, is career services something that I should be looking at when I look at colleges? Well, this is probably a biased answer, but yes, uh, I think you should. <laughs> I think it's a great idea to check out what are some of the outcomes and pathways from the specific majors or the specific programs um, at the institutions you're thinking of attending. Most of the career centers uh, or institutional research colleagues that are at, at universities around the country will do a survey, like I mentioned, on the graduating classes and mm -hmm. then publish some level of information about that so people have an understanding of what the outcomes are. Um, it's also a tool that we use a lot in advising with current students when they're thinking, you know, I'm thinking between these two majors or I have a couple ideas of majors and, you know, I'm wondering what, what, might, what that might lead to. You know, we can say, well, here are some real outcomes and destinations of where our students go. Here are some great graduate programs, some great medical school programs, some great law programs, some great employers where these majors go. Mm -hmm. um, so it, I think it certainly is something that might be worth a look for a high school student thinking about a university. You know, what are some of the, the places that those students go? Um, and now when, when the student comes to the campus for a tour, uh, is it is it something that that the tour guides usually take them to the career services the uh, department? Um, they the tours uh, they mention the career center quite a bit and talk a lot about the outcomes. Um, I don't know that they get to our side of campus, which is <laughs> completely fine. Uh, we know that we're going to meet those students, you know, right from the get go. As I mentioned, we have touch points with all the first year students in their first year, uh, some as early as the fall semester, quite quite early. Um, but they are, they do speak a lot about the Career Center and that outcomes information I shared. Um, they have all the information to talk about uh, the Career Center and the outcomes to students as well. Sure. Um, and they will definitely say, you know, it's, it's on West Campus and many of them will have already visited us so they can speak firsthand to what it's like to, to visit the Career Center, which is great. Yeah, so once they, once they get here, and um, is there a particular process that, that the student has to do to find you guys? and? and to give you some kind of uh, direction of what they're looking for? Yeah. It, it usually wait until sophomore year or they usually start coming in at freshman year? Yeah, the, we'll start interacting with them via classes often uh, in the first year and so that's where they'll get to know a little bit about us. Uh, and then many of them will meet one-on-one -on -one that year as well where we'll start to get to know them a little better. So that's a definite tip for any student attending any school is you know, get to know someone in your career center and have them get to know you yeah. because that really can build a solid relationship so the career center can start to really uh, offer up opportunities that are going to be most interesting to you for, again, any type of outcome you're thinking or destination you're thinking. Um, but through the handshake system, we have uh, a method where students can indicate their career interests to us so that way we can then start to send them targeted information about those opportunities, when those employers are visiting campus, when those types of jobs are posted in the system that we can start sending them to um, so they'll understand what the timing is like and when things are available. So are you connecting via email, text message? How, how, how are you connecting with the students? Uh, email, social media, um, not text message, not, not right now, maybe not <laughs> ever, but definitely not yet. Um, and it, I will, we'll let the students tell us what sort of preferences they'd have in terms of communication that way. But email, social media, and then all the physical places that we meet with them and talk with them. So we're very integrated, again, as I mentioned, into the, the classroom, into some curriculum points. And we're also just connected to a lot of student organizations and society. So we talk with sororities, we talk with fraternities, we talk with um, student professional societies at their meetings on a regular basis. Now, how can students uh, network? Um, is that something that the school provides? 
absolutely. Uh, lots of opportunities to do that. Um, some are at the in-person events that we host where we bring employers to campus to meet with students. Um, so we have several career fairs throughout the academic year and there's a series of them that are some focused specifically by industry, some general come one, come all events where they can all meet. And we also program specific events for our alumni, even if they're not affiliated with their employer necessarily for a recruiting event, where they can just meet with the students to talk about their career path and how they got to be where they are. Especially in industries where there are not people hired to do college recruiting, that's a big way in the door. Um, so they may not, that organization or that industry may not have a lot of college recruiters, um, but they have a lot of people who work there yeah. that can actually speak to the student one-on-one -on -one about what it's like to be a producer um, or an editor or uh, a museum curator, right? So those sorts of things, those pathways, we can connect, we can get students connected to alumni who will be here. So, so one of the one of the questions that I have is, as an executive director, what does your job entail? Yeah, um, well, I'm very fortunate that I get to lead a team of excellent people uh, who execute the work of the Career Center. So we have a team in our office that works specifically with the employers on their visits to campus and advertising those to students and they're executing their job postings and recruiting. Okay. And then we have a team of people that specifically do the career counseling and education with students on resume writing, LinkedIn profiles, using social media to build your brand, writing cover letters, practice interviews, um, all those things they'll do. And then there is a person in our office who was my previous position that manages the data and the technology for everybody and the support across there. So my role is connecting a lot with our colleagues across campus, the deans, the alumni association advancement to sort of open up opportunities for the career center, connect with students as well as to get to employers to work with students um, and connect with them and then help this group of individuals just execute their jobs that they already do so finely uh, and do it well. To make sure our so do you get involved in, in the student body as well? Do you walk around the campus and talk to, to students? Absolutely. Uh, that's something I knew I didn't want to leave at all. <laughs> uh, so I still keep a, a regular walk-in shift. We do drop-ins every day from 11 to 3 when we're open. So anyone can come in and ask any question. And I still keep a shift of that because I still want to get to know the students. Um, I teach a class in um, at the, the university. So I'm connected to students that way. Wow. And then there are still events that the students will, some who know me from other events, that they'll say, hey, can you come talk about about LinkedIn or can you come talk about something and I'll still be the one to do those things because it's just it's something I don't ever want to lose touch with and yeah. a part of the job that that uh, is always exciting every day. So you're a professor at the school as well? Yep, uh, one one class uh, so I certainly wouldn't want to take anything away from our tenured professors who are excellent and do deep deep research into amazing things <laughs> uh, but I do teach one one credit class that's on career and professional development for students. Fantastic. So, yeah. Well, we're coming to the end of our show, and okay. uh, usually I ask my guests, um, where, um, what advice do you want to give the students that are out there that are in high school and are thinking about Villanova University as a, as a destination? Yeah. Um, well, it's an amazing place to, to be. Uh, I, I think I probably stated that plenty of times, but just want to make sure I solidify that. It's a great place to be. And I really think about, you know, if you're applying to Villanova and thinking about coming to Villanova, um, what makes you unique and what makes you connected to the Villanova experience? What are things about Villanova you see that you've, you've gone on the Villanova's virtual tour, you've come to campus and you understand you know, what, what makes Villanova special? How are you connected to what makes Villanova special? What can you tell us about you that's gonna help you um, make your, your application, your candidacy uh, unique and special? Um, so that's something big. And then I, you know, certainly check out the Career Center, understand who we are. Hopefully you will get admitted and then you'll come meet with us. And so uh, take an opportunity to look at our website, look at the outcomes we have, look at some of the videos we've posted so you'll understand what the pathways are when you, when you get here. Great. Well, thank you very much for coming on Absolutely. the show. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. So you've been watching The Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva. Until next time.